Great. So um, thanks for coming to this. Uh, this is Hidden Histories, Illuminating G LGBTQ Archives at the University of Las Vegas, Nevada, using Wikidata. Um, Kayla Ott is the Wikimedian in Residence at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. They are also currently working toward their Master of Library and Information Science. Kayla, the mic is yours. Alrighty, thank you so much. Um, good day, everybody, and thank you so much for being here. Um, my name's Kayla, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm really excited to share my project with you. Alrighty, entire screen. Alrighty, and hopefully you can see my screen. All right. So this is Hidden Histories. All right. And then um, just to make sure no one's seeing the presenter view, right? They're seeing just the slides. Uh, can you show your slides again? I'm not, okay, there. Yes, Perfect. we are seeing just the slides, thanks. Perfect, okay. So today I will be discussing um, the University of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas' ongoing efforts to create, expand, and enrich linked data about the Nevada LGBTQ plus community. I will also address the challenges faced during entity extraction using archival materials. I will provide a visual demonstration using Wikiframe visual graph, and I will conclude this presentation by discussing future projects and um, efforts. And just as a brief content warning, I wanted to mention that queerphobia, specifically uh, homophobia and transphobia, might be mentioned as it relates to archival trauma, which may be triggering for some viewers, so I just wanted to mention that briefly. Um, a quick background, uh, UNLV Special Collections has been working to increase discoverability, visibility, and access to collections relating to marginalized communities here in Southern Nevada. Um, a brief timeline of that is listed here. Um, you can see in 2021, we did Mines of Southern Nevada, Las Vegas Historic Westside Legacy Park, Historic Nevada Newspapers, Westside Businesses, Nevada Women's History Project biographies, and then in 2023, we started our archival LGBTQ plus collection sprint. Um, the previous sprints um, have set precedent for best modeling practices for different P31 or instance of values in Wikidata. Um, for example, the Las Vegas Historic Westside Legacy Park sprint established a cradle form and a model for award winners that I was then able to use to enter award winners from the LGBTQ Center of Southern Nevada's um, honorarium honorees when I got to that point of my research. And also, similarly, the West Side Businesses established best practices for um, corporate entities, which provided me an easy to understand model for adding um, queer owned and operated businesses here in Las Vegas and Nevada. And located at the bottom of this slide is a link to our um, PCC project pilot page um, where you can find more information about each of these sprints and all of the Sparkle queries that have been written um, in association with them. Um, at UNLV, we have 62 manuscript collections, six photograph collections, and 82 oral histories that all pertain to um, the LGBTQ plus community. Um, these collections span over 40 years, um, so there is more than 40 years of history sitting in this archive waiting to be accessed, researched, and uncovered. Um, so in 2023, I began researching these collections for notable persons, events, and corporate entities. The interconnectedness of the LGBTQ community can be highlighted by the events, legislation, nonprofit organizations, notable persons, and businesses found in these collections. And located at the bottom of this slide is a graph visualization of the entities I was able to extract, compile, and then input into Wikidata. Um, which is 191 people, 147 corporate entities, 100 events, and 41 pieces of legislation. I would like to mention that there are more people, corporate entities, and events that um, existed, that happened, but they lack the physical ephemera to be able to create um, efficient, 
efficient and accurate citations. Um, but because there are dozens of collections, some of which spanning more than 40 years, more people, corporations, and events are being uncovered weekly and even daily during my archival research. Which brings me to the continuation of this archival LGBTQ plus sprint. Um, we wanted to, um, like I mentioned, there is um, a ton of more people and events that I can add on to what I've already done, um, but we wanted to find a more focalized um, thing to focus on. And we were um, approached by Review, Reveal Digital to um, do some AIDS artwork um, digitization. And we discovered that there is um, over 30 years of AIDS walks here in Nevada um, that there's no uh, information on, about them online. And so um, there is, the way that I went about this, um, it's a combination of digitized and undigitized references. Um, from 1995 to 2015, we have physical ephemera in our collections that um, we can cite back to, which is incredible. And all of that's been digitized and is available online. So it's very easy for me to cite that um, in Wikidata for the references. Um, but for prior to 1995, so 91 to 94, and after 2015, I had to resort to using newspaper um, databases online and seeing um, if there were any Facebook events or things of that nature that I could find to cite um, to create those events. In terms of archival trauma, um, the AIDS, pa pandemic, or AIDS panic exacerbated pre-existing homophobic beliefs. And there are some very tragic stories that I read about and learned about. Um, and while much of queer history can be tragic, there is so much joy and we are trying to highlight that joy um, here at UNLV. And so for modeling um, these AIDS walks, um, an AIDS walk label existed in Wikidata, but it had not been used as a P31 value for any other item. And so because of that, it didn't have a strong structure to go off of. And base because of that, I followed the hierarchy of the subclass of property to find more ways to model. And I discovered that AIDS walks had been modeled as a subclass of a walkathon and a subclass of a fundraiser. And I found other walkathons and fundraisers that I was able to determine a list of properties um, for AIDS walks. And on this next slide, here is um, a screenshot of those properties. As you can see, there's a label description, um, the instance of a focus list, um, country, location, inception. And uh, very specifically, this is for AIDS walks as an annual event. This um, model is for the annual event. So the, the Las Vegas AIDS walk um, would be the annual event. And then each year's rendition of that event. So the Las Vegas AIDS walk of 1991 would be its own recurrent event edition with uh, the P31 of a recurrent event edition and the P31 of an AIDS walk. And then on this next slide, um, you can see a photograph from one of our archival collections. It depicts the 2002 AIDS walk here in Las Vegas. And you can see dozens of participants uh, walking along the Las Vegas Strip in front of the Caesars Palace. Um, and then after AIDS walks, um, I was doing some research in these archival collections and discovered that there are more than 20 female impersonation shows um, that have not been uh, really researched or put online. Um, and so I figured that those were another really excellent thing to focus on. And so while the term female impersonator and drag show um, or female impersonation show and drag show can be used interchangeably, they are different. And the best distinction and description I was able to find was on the female impersonation Wikipedia page, which says, uh, which describes drag as an art form associated with the queer identity. 
whereas female impersonation may come from a wide range of gender identity paradigms, including heteronormativity. And I really like that a lot because it emphasizes that um, drag is by the queer community for the que queer community, but female impersonation um, is more of a historic term and included um, heteronormative um, individuals as well. And so for a brief history on female impersonation shows here in Las Vegas, um, prior to the 1970s, there was no set show. Um, we had a few famed female impersonators visit from across the country, um, such as Billy Richards, T.C. Jones, um, and Maya, the world's most glamorous boy. But it wasn't until 1971 and 1973 that Las Vegas casinos and local bars started having their own official um, female impersonation shows. Um, so similarly with the AIDS walks, um, this was entirely undigitized um, archival material, which meant um, it required a lot more in-depth research. Um, I am very fortunate to have a research predecessor that um, compiled a list of citations for many things, um, but it is still a process of going back and verifying that those citations are correct and accurate and useful when making um, my Wikidata items. And so it, I have spent a lot of time in the archives going through newspaper clippings and things of the like. And also similar to the AIDS walks, there um, is archival trauma associated with the female impersonation shows, specifically um, just the entrapment and cro uh, cross-dressing laws here in Nevada that we had, um, and more specifically a local piece of history that happened, um, a local LGBTQ bar um, was a victim of an arson attack during a um, female impersonation show in 1988. And again, while you know that can be very difficult to research and learn about, um, it's an important part of the history and we are trying to highlight all of the good things that come along with the bad. And then for modeling, these uh, female impersonation and drag shows. In Wikidata, the only drag shows that have been modeled previously are the uh, well-known televised drag shows, such as RuPaul's Drag Race and all of the renditions of RuPaul's Drag Race that there are in other countries. And because of that, it, this was a lot more difficult for me to figure out how to model. And I had to research how musicals, plays, vaudeville, uh, burlesque and review shows were all modeled, which there are still very few of each of those, um, but it, those provided me with a basis to um, then find properties um, to go off of. And so here on this slide, you can see a screenshot of the properties for the female impersonation shows. Um, instance of, subclass of, focus list, all of the main ones, title, country of origin, but it gets more specific of like their location of first performance, date of first performance, um, choreographer, director, producer, things of that nature that are more um, in tune with a performance work. Um, and then here is an image of um, some female impersonators at the Kit Kat Club here in Las Vegas from 1944. And then now I'm going to do a brief dem demonstration of the Wikiframe visual graph. Um, included on this slide are screenshots of the uh, top P31 in, uh, instance of uh, property that um, is used on the Wikidata items that are associated with our PCC project and also the most used subjects. And I've highlighted the LGBTQ uh, properties and subjects here. Sorry about that. Oh my gosh. Alrighty, so here is Wikiframe. Um, it is a, an exceptional tool. And so I am going to show how you can use these facets to see the data I have put into Wikidata. So, 
there is a, um, a bubble graph, but you can close that and also see a uh, list view as well. And this is a view of the manuscript collections here at, LG, uh, at UNLV that have the subject LGBT community. And while um, I know I mentioned that there is over 60, um, these are just specifically that subject. And then for oral histories, do a, you can see all of them here, over 259 of those. It takes a second for that graph visualization to load. Um, for people, um, when I was creating people um, for from the LGBTQ community, they come from all walks of life, all sorts of different occupations, and um, but some didn't really have any occupation at all. And we ended up going with um, activists because of the work that they were doing in the community, even though they didn't have an official occupation title. And so here is the graph and list of those 50 individuals. And then for corporate bodies, we will do LGBT bars. And then, so again, the graph visualization and also a list of over 44 LGBT bars here in Las Vegas. And then if you have um, any questions about Wikiframe or are you interested in more of that, I have included the contact information for the developer and the owner, uh, uh, Andre and Darnell. Um, if you have any more questions about that, they are the experts. And then in terms of future projects and work, uh, we have created an AIDS Walk Wiki project. Um, and we are hoping that we can get um, members from the LD4 community and just the Wiki data community as a whole to collaborate and add more AIDS Walks from around the country and around the globe. Um, and I've included um, a screenshot of the label and the contents here on this slide and at the bottom, uh, a link to the project page. And on the project page, there's not a ton yet. Um, aim and scope, I've included the modeling that I've included in this presentation as well. Um, and then also there is um, a Sparkle query to um, the AIDS walks that I have created for Las Vegas as well. And then if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, if not, I, that is it for my presentation. Thank you so much. This is so cool and also like such important work. Um, so there was one question so far, like if folks want to throw things into the Zoom chat or into the Slack, uh, we're monitoring both. Um, there is a question that says, um, I see that Homosaurus gets mentioned a lot in this conference for LGBTQ related projects. Why do you choose to use Wikidata instead? Um, Violet Fox responded, Homosaurus is a thesaurus that is only used for subject analysis. Uh, Wikidata is a collaborative knowledge base where open data is created, uh, but I wanted to pass this to you in case you had anything to add there. Um, so I actually use Homosaurus in conjunction with Wikidata. Um, you can add Homosaurus um, as um, their unique IDs or URIs. You can add those into your Wikidata items. Um, so actually recently I was looking for female impersonation shows in the Homosaurus and they didn't have it. And I actually just recently um, submitted that as a suggestion for them to add. Um, because they made the important distinction of female um, impersonator versus drag queen and how that's a historical term and how it's important to have that distinction. And so I figured having the distinction between the shows was also important as well. Oh, that's great. Um, uh, so I have a follow up question on that while we wait for other questions to appear. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have you added any um, homosaurus terms to Wikidata? Um, because I, I know that a number of them are represented there and there's, um, I think there's like an ID property for Homosaurus, but I don't think the entire vocabulary is uh, uh, represented in Wikidata. Do you, have you um, added things in the other direction? Um, I think I have added, um, like on Drag Show, the Wikidata term Drag Show did not have the Homosaurus um, ID on there, so I just added it in. 
Um, but other than that, I have not gone through and added um, other terms or done a project on adding more terms. Cool, cool. Um, there's a question. Um, are any of the locations slash venue build, venues slash buildings associated with your projects listed on the National Re Register of Historic Places? Do you know of anyone who has used your research tools to access archival material to incorporate into a National Register nomination? I'm actually not sure if any of these locations have been included in the National Register of Historic Places. Um, from what I understood, it they were all very local community, like local businesses, very small. Um, but that is something that I'm definitely going to look more into and see if they are included on that. Cool. Um, there's a, a comment that um, you, you mentioned wanting uh, collaborators uh, for your project and uh, someone commented that this sounds like a great Wikidata working hour project. Um, I was curious whether um, you had reached out to any groups like the LD4 um, uh, Wikidata affinity group about something like that and or what kinds of tasks were you hoping for collaborators to pitch in on? Um, so I have not pitched it to anyone yet. Um, I This was kind of going to be my introduction to the project here at this presentation. Um, in terms of contributions, as much as you're comfortable, anyone's comfortable with, um, it's uh, beginner friendly um, because I still feel very much like a beginner in terms of Wikidata. I've only been doing it for about a year. Um, so I wanted it to be very fr uh, beginner friendly and streamlined. That's why I included the models and everything on that page um, and it's just if you know if you have an AIDS walk in your your city your hometown um, just if you could include those into Wikidata that makes the graph better and bigger and even just a small contribution of one or two makes it all the better. Great. Um, a uh, question uh, in Zoom chat, uh, is the Wiki Project AIDS still active? Have you been able to get any interest from other folks working on LGBTQ Wikimedia projects? I did not see Wiki Project AIDS when I was looking through the Wiki projects. Um, so I would assume not, but I will follow up on that and triple check. Um, and I, again, have not reached out um, to anyone about this project yet but I have been um, looking into reaching out to the LGBT Wiki project and seeing if they would be interested as well. Cool. Um, yeah, I feel like it's a very common thing to like not find Wiki Pro, oh, there's a, there's a link to the Wiki Project Aids in here um, that Violet just posted. Oh, yeah, I feel like whether or not you find the relevant Wiki project when you're searching is like so hit or miss. Um, looking to see if there's any more questions. Uh, Bree, has anything shown up in the Slack? There has not been anything that showed up in Slack and there's nothing in the Q&A box either. Thank you. Um, well, I have another question if somebody can suffer through me asking more questions. Um, so uh, you briefly showed your model for describing, um, uh, it was either drag shows or female impersonation shows. Um, uh, can you tell us more about whether these are like single, like one-off events, or if they're series of events? I'm I'm curious about like the modeling and like what, um, like what the assumptions are for for these as shows. Yeah. So these, um, so that model is explicitly for live female impersonation shows. Um, I was doing them kind of based off of like a show that had a run, um, because that's how they had them here. Um, so for example. Um, let's see. Um, so we had Flamboyant Follies at the Mint here in 1985 is when it started. And so um, I would mention, you know, the inception date or the date of first opening is 1985, but um, there is potential that it has, you know, could still be running or has a later end date. Um, and so I deliberately modeled this to be like a live performance um, drag show and not the televised ones. And so that's why um, in the model it uh, for the P31, I use performance work, um, the Q number for performance work. And then it is a subclass of variety, which is um, a lot different from variety show 
television and different from variety show radio, but is explicitly for variety of like a live performance, including skits, comedy, um, lip syncing and things like that. Cool. Checking again for more questions. Um, not seeing anything additional. Um, Bree, let me know if anything pops up. Yeah, there's nothing additional here either. Okay, cool. Um, okay, while you're all thinking about questions, I did want to ask one more question, um, mostly just about like uh, having. I, I guess I, I'm curious whether you um, there were unresolved questions about event modeling that you ran into, or where there were areas of ambiguity. Because I feel like I like I, I this came up a bit in the um, art and design uh, uh, session yesterday. Like there, I think there are a lot of people who have questions about modeling events, and I've run into this personally. So I wanted to ask you if there, um, like, besides the the fact that you have. Um, you had to model on like very few instances within Wikidata. Um, what, I guess, did, what challenges did you run into uh, in that area? Yeah, so the biggest challenge was the fact that there were no AIDS walks. Or, so there was the label in Wikidata, but no other item had used that as their P31. So I had to figure out, um, so I looked at walkathons um, and fundraisers, but even then those were kind of few and far between. So I even tried like half marathons and other things similar to walkathons and fundraisers to see if there were other properties that I could uh, think of or get a like find that I couldn't think of off the top of my head. Um, one being like number of participants for the AIDS walks. Um, didn't think about that, but that's something that sometimes they did keep track of that. And that could be potentially um, some data that could have really cool visualizations going forward in the future. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. There's a question in Zoom chat. Uh, should non Las Vegas AIDS walks use the item Wiki Project PCC Pilot University of Nevada Las Vegas Wiki, Wiki Project Focus List. Um, I think this is basically a question of like, should we should those items be linking to your project item? So no, um, that would be for the AIDS walks. It would be to the AIDS project. I might have taken the screenshot from the wrong project page. That's my bad. Cool, cool. Um, and uh, another question. Um, I really like the idea of using the LGBTQ Center's honorees to get a list of people to add to Wikidata. Can you share a little bit more about that part of the project? Yeah, um, so um, in the archival collection we have here, we actually have the physical um, programs from those events. And so I had to physically go through and then manually transcribe all of that data um, and then put it into Wikidata. Um, and it wasn't too difficult. The worst, the hardest part was that some of those people who won an award for ally of the year or woman of the year or man of the year, things of those nature, sometimes they didn't have a digital footprint um, past that. And so there were a few people that were, uh, I was unable to include because of the fact that I didn't have any information about them whatsoever. Um, um, there's a little more uh, comment on the question about um, AIDS walk items, uh, but actually there's another question as well. Uh, what was your favorite part of working on the project in relation to Las Vegas's LGBTQIA history? My favorite part? Um, I've loved all of it. Um, getting to learn more about my local community was incredible, but I think the best part was meeting the historian that compiled most of these collections and who has been researching this history for over 40 years. Um, he, meeting him was kind of like meeting a celebrity in my eyes. Um, he has done such incredible work um, by compiling all that ephemera and all of that history and just getting to talk to him and meet him was an incredible achievement in my eyes. That's so cool. Um, so uh, in the thread about the focus list property, Carly says, 
Uh, my source that led me to question whether that property should be added uh, to other AIDS walks, and uh, they gave a link to the w Wiki Project AIDS Walk site. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually a question, but uh, I, um, Carly, if you want to unmute, if there's like something more that you wanted to uh, expound on here, um, we do have plenty of time. Um, but no sure, pressure. I'll unmute quickly. My my headphones are off today. Um, but I just, I was asking that because I'm looking at the Wiki data, Wiki Project AIDS Walk, and currently on the um, sort of suggested data model that is on the AIDS Walk page, not the UNLV page. Yep, I, I just um, copied that maybe. over and forgot to change the <laughs> property, so I will fix that after <laughs> okay. this. No problem. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could also create a Wikidata item for the Wiki Project AIDS Walks. Um, yep. If you wanted um, that to be added, I'm just looking. There was already an item for the um, the AIDS Walk New York, so I'm trying to build it out a little bit based on the table. Um, and I just wanted to clarify which focus list, if any, I should add it to. Yeah, it'll it'll be an AIDS Walk focus list. I just copied that from the other project and completely forgot to fix that. Thanks, Carly. It's great to have collaborators for this kind of thing. Um, uh, so uh, Violet asks, is, was that LGBTQ historian Dennis McBride? Yes, it was. So cool. OK, um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, let's, oh, suddenly there's more questions. That's what I have to say to make questions up here. Um, uh, what is the link to the tool Wikiview question mark you were using at the end? Uh, see I if think I, can I have it open it. in a browser tab myself. This was this WikiFrame, maybe. That's what. That's what. I just didn't didn't wasn't somewhere where I could write it down. <clears throat> Great. Well, yeah. We'll we'll copy that to the to the Slack. Um, is that a is that a is that a um, a tool that other folks can use? Like, can they get the code from from GitHub or something? Or I believe so. Yes, Darnell Melvin has the uh, the. It's all in his GitHub repo repository. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. I'll give this like one more minute to see if more questions appear. Going once, going twice. All right, I think we've gotten through all of the questions, um, unless something appears suddenly now that I like am saying like making making wrap up noises. Um, this was such a wonderful session. Thank you for for presenting, and thanks everyone for coming. Um, uh, our next session is going to be at three o'clock. Uh, it starts with Semantic Media Wiki as a linked open data platform. Um, that's I, that I believe will be on a different Zoom link, in, just in case you're uh, leaving your Zoom links open through breaks. Um, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Kayla, and thank you to um, Bree for co-hosting with me. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a great day.